Hello and welcome to This Time Africa. Once again, we are right here in the studios of Africa today. And of course, I'm your host, Sia Matilda Banga. Today, we bring a breaking news because This Time Africa wants to discuss or ask the question, to go or not to go? Zero, zero tolerance policy. Will it work? And who does it work for? In the studios, we are going to talk about it today. I have two people and you will hear from them when we come back. This is This Time Africa. Oh, all right, so um, as you all know, the current administration and their zero tolerance policy has led thousands of people to be separated from their families. And many people have referred to this as a thorn in the flesh for immigrants to suppress to suppress immigrants so that some of them can be separated not only from their families from their resources and all that they have done in the united states of america well thankfully people like george dana sabro of the southern district of Colum of california took a stance and that urged and forced the current administration to reunify thousands of immigrant families and thankfully we are here today to also talk to somebody who is being affected by the zero tolerance policy. Tonight, I speak with Coach Fofo. He's a man who is normally called Coach Fofo. He has lived in the United States of America for, America for over 20 years. And the case for Coach Fofo today is not because he has lived here for how many years, but it's because of the valuable contribution that Coach Fofo has made to this nation individually as well as corporately uh, with families. Coach Fofo, welcome to the show. Good night. How are you? I am very good, thank you. I'm very good, thank you. I'm also in the person of Kendall Battle, who also has come to lay the case for Coach Fofo. I have her in the studios. Hello and welcome to the show, Kendall. Good night and thank you for having me. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. So, Coach Fofo, let me start with you because this is the case for Coach Fofo. Now, like I said in my introduction, Coach Fofo, many people have lived here 20 years, 30 years, 10, 15. But what makes your case different is the valuable contribution, the lives that you have touched, the legacy that continues to live on. And this is why This Time Africa has joined you to make a case. Let the people hear from you. Why not Coach Fofo? Why not Coach Fofo? Because uh, first of all, I want to take the time to thank uh, for the million of people who are watching out tonight uh, to thank you and also the producer of Africa Today to back me up uh, from uh, Africa Today, to back me up uh, for this uh, situation I'm going through uh, a couple months ago and uh, from today, and uh, also to have a way to leverage my story to people who like me on the same situation, but who don't have a chance or who don't have a goal to come out and talk. And uh, you know, uh, that is the reason I'm, I'm here tonight to also to contribute and uh, to explain my situation to uh, a lot of people who come from uh, our country uh, to seek in a place in this country, uh, have a family, leverage, you know, be a part of uh, this grateful uh, country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. So um, you are the voice of thousands. I know that you're being targeted. I know that you're at a place where you can almost be deported because I want us to have it clear so that people who want to support you and help you will understand why there is a need to make this case today. So you're not only speaking for yourself, but you're speaking for thousands. But take me through the journey of some of the programs that you have been doing, that you have been doing, that sets you apart, that makes you different, that gives us a reason and for other people to take their time, their money and everything. There are many town hall meetings going on. Why Coach Fofo? Uh, why Coach Fofo? Because uh, when I came here, like everybody, uh, I look around the community I live, and I see those people on um, very underserving community.
local county and they were able to find a way uh, to find something for those kids, uh, let them busy to avoid the streets, to avoid the gang, to avoid the drugs, uh, to let them be uh, uh, the future. And then we came with a, a soccer program. Uh, as everybody knows, soccer is a piece who put people together. No matter what color, uh, where you're from, what language you speak, what dialect, soccer is a, a sport who bring uh, people together. And then we start a uh, couple years ago and the community established a, a program and then added some education pieces. And then where we are today, uh, we have uh, uh, more than 400 kids on our program training every other two days a week. Uh, we have a all around program. This means we don't stop educating or elevated our kids. We do it through the whole year. Uh, we play in the kids play on a, on a league. We have a recreation program. We have a, a select. We have a travel team, and they also have a program like a leadership program, college prep, uh, youth entrepreneurship program. Uh, we have a civil engagement program. Name it, we'll give it to you. We have so many things to elevate and also, also empower family, parents, and uh, our constituents in, in the neighborhood uh, who find a way to be around the kids uh, through the summer, uh, during the summer camp, uh, provide the services that way. Kids who parents that are not home to support the homework, uh, we have a way to support those kind of programs. Uh, we've been doing so many stuff, positive stuff uh, in the community, and they give us a, a, a hands to have a 95% of honorable students in our, our, our program living in the community. And uh, today, we see behind that people driving <coughs> all the way from Frederick, uh, Bethesda, uh, Upper Marlboro, name it, to bring their kids to our program. This means what we've been doing in the community it taking place, is very successful, and he elevates our kid. Thank you so much. And I'm glad that you elaborated on that. Because for the, for the sake of people who may not understand, I want to just re-emphasize or reiterate what you've just said so that we can understand why we are making the case for Coach Pofo. You are saying to us that you came to the United States of America just like any immigrant would come, and that you did not just sit and find your nine to five job and take care of your family, but you you took an interest in the youth and the community around you. And what you did was you galvanized these young people who were into drugs, who were into gang, and who were whose conduct were who's out of work, and what you did was you organized you Thank organized you. programs for them Thank that would not only help them academically, but you engaged them in a civic, you also had civic engagement activities for them. You had leadership program for them. You had emerging leaders uh, program for them. You conducted summer camps that would bring these kids together. And on the the big playing field level, you also said to us that you organize um, a soccer. Soccer brings you together. Soccer makes people lay down their arms and love it or that thing is another way of diversity and inclusion. All of this you have done with about 400 kids. It says to me that you, Coach Pofo, you're a selfless human being who would have just come to the U.S. and just minded your business and care for your family. I want to personally say thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I think that's where you and Kendall Battle met. And Kendall is here with us today to share her reason. To share her reason why, why is it that we are making a case for Coach Fofo? And why Coach Fofo should be one of the people that should stay in the United States of America legally and be given his paper because Coach Fofo has extended himself, out of himself, out of his family, 
and he has touched over 400 lives within the time that he has been in the United States. Once again, I want to say thank you very much. And of course, we will be talking to Kendall, who has a personal experience <laughs> um, whereby Coach Fofo has touched the life, not only of her, but also her daughter. Coach Fofo, while we're waiting for Kendall to come back on, let me just ask you this. Uh, am I correct for saying that you've been in the U.S. for 20 years? Can I hear the question again? Am I correct by saying that you've been in the United States for 20 years? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so you've been in the 20 years. Yeah. And um, do you have like any other job? Because this must be really time consuming for you. I'm also a teacher. I'm also a paraprofessional in a public school. Uh, who I work with a special need kid, kid with a uh, disability, kid with uh, autism. Uh, kid with uh, Down syndrome, kid with uh, ADD, all those uh, kids within a wheelchair. Over 16 years, I've been working on the school, uh, and I hope my job is uh, to take care for those kids with the behavior, uh, and then also make sure uh, we provide a love, affection to those kids who uh, need uh, to trust somebody before, you know, you can work with them. Uh, so my life, my whole life is a challenge from my job and also for my community. So I'm the one of a person who have a chance. Uh, God has a touch in my life with the strength. Being, have a, be a kind person to work with those kids and then reply the same thing I've been doing in the school and as a job. And also to affect elevated my key or the other kids in the community. Wow, you are an amazing man. You are an amazing man. I think, I think just like you said, this is an assignment from God, because I am just just listening to you. Even as a teacher, you find yourself among for 16 years among the kids with disability, among the kids that are unable to care for themselves. You find yourself among kids that use a wheelchair. They are disabled. They can't really, you know, do things for themselves. And you have taken on that for 16 years of the 20 years that you have lived in the U.S. and you have made that your primary, your primary goal to make sure that you, you, you bring a change in their life. This is very amazing. This is very amazing, I must say. And how do you feel just just dealing with those kids? Let's start with the school and we'll come back to the kids that all call you Coach Coco. I mean, Coach Fofo. <laughs> Let's start with the school. Let's start with the school. Uh, how do the kids feel? When I came to this country, I had a job working on the staples as a sales person. And then one day, I remember a guy coming to the shop uh, looking for something and then asking me a question and I turned my back to go to the, uh, uh, the to go find him and what he be looking for and when I came back he asked me oh why are you been working like a somebody who plays soccer before and then I told him say no I'm a soccer player I play soccer my whole life and I play professional but now I'm a coach and then he opened himself to me say you know what they have been looking a coach for my, my, my son's school. And that school is a high point high school. And they say, okay, what time are you going to be finish your job? And I say, I'll finish it by two o'clock. They say, I'm coming back here personally and take you to that school. And the one he did it. After two o'clock, when I clock out, the man who was walking, was waiting for me outside and he drove me with his own car to go to the school and meet the principal, say, I brought you a coach. Wow. And it, from that day, I become a coach for that school, and we won the two state championship, and I stayed for four years. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You went to the school, yeah. and you got there, and you won two state championships. Yeah. Bravo, Coach Fofo. Go ahead. And then, They've been looking for uh, a teacher as a French teacher. 
and I become a sub, a French teacher, and the same high school, and I, I work for four years in the same high school, and then I move up to special education because of uh, the behavior of a uh, uh, that school become something very obvious, and the way we be brought in here in Africa, I'm trying to bring the same. And then my colleague was telling me, say, hey, you have to be careful. The way people educate kids in Africa is totally different here. If any kid won't learn, if you don't want to learn, you let them go. Because when you try to do too much, it will return against you. And then I said, you know what? I had to find a way to be STEM in education. And I make a, a slide moving to go back to the special education, who I am uh, from that day to today. Wow. Great story. Great story. I think after this, we're going to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> you have an amazing story. And I think this is why, like today, you had people in different churches, in different places, whether it be Muslim, whether it be Christian. I mean, you cut across the religious boundary. You cut across racial boundary because you bring people from different, different ethnic backgrounds and you bring their children together. Tell us about those 400 kids that you work with and maybe they their different backgrounds, or give us like two typical examples of kids, of success story, of the kids that you've met, and how, by the grace of God, you turn their lives around. Simple story. Uh, three years ago, I have a kid, a boy, come from Gambia. And I remember coming, uh, visit uh, his family here, and, uh, and uh, we already have a, uh, that boy family member on uh, our program. So, that day what we have a game, they invite, he followed the family to come. And I, I remember that day, that boy didn't have a soccer shoes on the feet. And then we are looking to complete one group to play. And then we asked him, he said, hey, I can play. And that boy played that day. And then uh, it was amazing. Kid play with no shoes. Oh. But beats. Kid who have shoes on the foot. And then from that day, I took that boy on my charge, provided him, him the shoes, providing everything. And then that boy today is in Switzerland on his professional team. Three years ago, we sent him to the Switzerland uh, with his family, who is there over there now today playing in the professional team. He's only 14 years old. Only 14 years old, and he is a playing already for the Swiss team because yeah. he passed through the hands of Coach Popo. And exactly. that's why we, at this time, Africa, we are making the case for Coach Popo. When we come back, we will talk some more about the 400 kids under the banishing of our own dear Coach Popo. We'll be right back. promote your business? Do you want to talk about your nonprofit organization? Do you want to talk about your culture? Introducing the online web TV, Africa Today. We are live every Sunday at 3 p.m. Our shows are 3 p.m. Sunday Guests with Elaine Pierre, 4 p.m. This Time Africa with San Natilda Banga, 5 p.m. Transformation Point with Dr. Natalie Kamsudomo. 5.30, Cyber Connect, Cyber Connect with Gene Bosco Fogham. You can watch us live at the same time on four platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and using the Africa Today app. Download our app today for Android or Apple. Promote your business today. For more information, go to www.africatoday.com. Africa Today, the best of digital TV.
We are back on This Time Africa and today's breaking news is the case for Coach Fofo. Welcome back to the show, Coach Fofo. Thank you. All right. So, um, like I said, when we, when we come back, we're going to talk about the 400, about 400 kids. Now that everything is going on about you, what do you think those kids feel? Or probably, let me turn it this way. How are you feeling? Should anything happen? Why should we fight so that nothing should happen? Just about the kids. What would you say to everyone? Uh, right now, um, just want to touch a lot of soul and a lot of people who know me, who know my dedication, know my perseverance, know my hard work around those kids. If it's today, or tomorrow, anything happen, I don't know who gonna be a carer for those kids. Yes, probably not. Uh, I I take a chance. It's a it take a, a whole village to raise a child, and then between that whole village, I have a point to create a, a specific and individually connection with each kid in these four hundred kids, and then the love is now. Paul love is different than Pierre or Christian. I love those kids as the way I love my own child. What we have it, we share together. What anybody's not doing well in school, at home, but the penalty we're gonna call Coach Fofo, he will come and confess. So if anything happened tomorrow, I know I have I have people around me, but I'm not saying I'm a superhero, but it was something, it was a disaster for those kids who are continue rising because even now we're on the spring season, we have a, a top of a 20% increasing registration for the people joining this organization because but what we've been doing in the community, we have a Jewish people, we have a Korean, we have a Chinese people, we have a Caribbean, we have a Spanish and the whole African continent is represented in the ACDA. So, is it something we build with a God fear, with a patience, with a, a, a devotion? It's not just a things that people just gather to do. It. Is it God call and a God said, let the kid come to my kingdom because my kingdom belongs to them. Somebody had to take those kids to the God kingdom. That's what we've been doing in the community. So, I just am with the God hand, and then we pray hard, and then I'm asking the community, the community pray for me. Nobody there will have a power down the God. And then I know God is able to do something now for me, for the kids, and for the family, for the entire community. So, what we start doing, we can finish. What That's we what start I'm doing, we can finish because the case that we are making is is not just for um coach fofo but also for the kids that we do not want to leave them in distress we don't want to leave them you know unattended we want to make sure that this course is continued we have to make sure that the path is continued that coach fofo and his team have started and so it is very very important that for all of you who are listening for all of you maybe viewing the show our plea is not just for the man but for the kids that stand with him for the kids whose lives have been touched and improved for what are you in this world if you cannot change another man if you cannot bring a positive change in another man's life what are you living for coach fofo has done just that and he have been very very selfless do we have kendall battle on yes i'm here Hi, Kendall. It's so nice to have you. We are making the case for Coach Fofo, and I know that you and him met because he had a personal touch on your daughter's life. Can you share that with us, please? Yes. Um, I, I am so thankful for Coach Fofo because one day I was in the store, and I heard that he spoke French, and I just stopped him and said, hey, my daughter is taking French in elementary school. Can you help tutor her? He didn't know me, and he said yes, and he helped. And then after my daughter got into college, I came back to him again and said, 
my daughter is taking French again and she needs help. Will you help her? He said, yes. And I, I never knew that he was so filled up with so many other things going on, helping this one, helping that one. But also at the same time, as time went on, I started working with Coach Fufu and other things within the community. So I got to know him in, in the time span from my daughter being in elementary school to my daughter being in college. So for me, I, I, I see people say that they're against family separation, but now I want to take a part in stopping family separation. Thank you very much, Kendall. This is very important for us because it shows, it goes a long way to show that what Coach Fofo was saying that his group cuts across um, racial barriers or tribal or continental. You are an American, right, Kendall? You are an American born here. And for you, I think, to validate him in, in such a way, it's, it's, it's very, very amazing. Kendall? Yes. It, it, it makes a lot for me, but also now that my daughter is working with other children and she's also working with other immigrants, she has run into a young girl in elementary school that speaks French. That's her first language. And she wasn't feeling comfortable in speaking with other people because now my daughter knows some French. She was able to help this little girl feel more comfortable so those are the things that i reach back on how one just one day this man that didn't even know me was willing to help my daughter that now my daughter can help someone else thank you i'm going to ask you one last question before i let you go kendall and i asked coach for for this question how are you feeling even now just thinking if should anything happen about the kids these wonderful kids that have grown, I mean, just along with this man. They have been in the different groups, in the different organizations. They have been groomed as leaders. I mean, they engage in, in every civic uh, affairs in the, in, the, in the county. What are your thoughts right now? Right now, I have pain in my heart. Okay. But I, I, I want to say as far as helping the youth in the community, when my daughter first found out about Fofo and how he had to go back in and check in on the 29th, the next Monday, my daughter went to work and told them, I'm taking off. She is going to be there. She's only 21. And she already feels the effect that it can have on as a youth within the community. Then she has other youth in her age group that Coach Fofo has already trained and mentored that they're now calling her as well. They didn't even know that they all knew him, but mm -hmm. that's how things are intertwined within the community where he is concerned. He is the thread in, in, in all of us. Oh, thank you very much. Coach Fofo, you are the thread. You are the one that connects us. In fact, you are like a bridge. You are like a bridge. What's your last appeal to the people that will be listening? I just want to be grateful. And tell us also about the event that is coming up on, is it April 29th? Yeah, tomorrow, from tomorrow. All okay. to, yeah. Uh, first of all, I just want to be thankful to everyone who day one supporting me, you know, uh, through a petition, through good funding, uh, through phone call to check on me, my school, my principal, my staff, the whole community. I don't know how to say thank to everyone, but I, I know God's going to be reward every single person at the way they look to me and they will look to them too. And I also, I just want to be grateful for this country. This is a great country. Yes. Who I have a chance to be put my two foot yes. and try things and it happen. Mm. It is a, a land of opportunity and I'm, I'm grateful to the Lord to be this country mm. to do things I'll be able to do with my passion and love and affection and it happened. I did it. So, uh, it, we can say everything. We can say whatever. This country belong, be, 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 is a, is a great country and a, 
I have a chance to be living and I'll continue to live in. I'm not going anywhere, but I'm thanking everyone. And I'm also thankful for the whole community. You guys, uh, the, everyone who take this story to try to sell it so things can happen. Thank, thank Lord too. Thank you very much. You know, we are taking this person because everybody is coach for four. We all came, we crossed the rivers and we came to the great United States. I call the United States the mother of a great heart because it's a mother, a country that opens the heart to everyone. As so long as you come, you behave, you're touching one life at a time. You can stay here. America, let Coach Fofo stay. This is where we drop it at today's meeting and we're going to bring the cutting down. We have been speaking with Kendall Battle, who is coming here to make a case so that Coach Fofo will stay. And of course, Coach Fofo himself, who says it's not about the years, but it's about the valuable contribution and the lives that he has touched. Once again, this is your this is your host, Sia Matilda Banga. You know where to watch us. This is breaking news. So go to Facebook Live, download the app www.afric.com and watch us on YouTube. Again, this show will air again on Sunday. So keep your eyes on this time, Africa. It's been good to have you. Do something, share the word, sign a petition, a case for Coach 44. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.